farmers campaign intensified for the upcoming general election, what does all this mean for you, the voter? What do the candidates have to offer? How prepared are agencies charged with the election process? Join John Curia and Safina Chiang on Kenya Decides. This and every Tuesday from 10 p.m. on KBC Channel 1 as we unpack elections 2022 with a panel of various stakeholders. Make informed electoral decisions. Good morning, Good morning and thank you for creating time for us on a news check, a program that seeks to explore issues shaping the news in the country. And uh, today being the 28th day of the sixth month, the year 2022, a lot is indeed happening. Politically speaking on the campaign trail, we'll be looking at some of the issues that have been shaping the political terrain. Also, we'll be talking about the role of the media, not just in election, but also generally in leadership and uh, governance. Of course, a bit later later on in the course of this particular broadcast and allow me to bring in my guest uh, for the conversation this morning in studio. I'm hosting Gloria Roba. She's a youth policy analyst. Thank you, Gloria, once again for creating time for us. Thank you for having me. Must be a very busy season for you right the, now. The last time actually I was <laughs> here, I was still vying yeah, for, I, Bobasi for Bobasi constituency. constituency and we were going, we were preparing for party primaries. <laughs> so now welcome back <laughs> let me say that <laughs> now I'm back we went for primaries uh, I didn't get the ticket I yeah. came in second but um, um, I joined the the, uh, the presidential campaign team so Kazi Kotubado we are, we, are, we are working hard <laughs> alright yeah we'll talk more about what you have been doing behind the scenes yeah. and what Kenyans can expect but let's talk about uh, ju let me just pick up from where my colleague left mm -hmm. uh, there was that issue of the zoning um, you know that has been that has created quite a debate among the political class mm -hmm. uh, especially <coughs> now that we have the arrangement of coalitions mm -hmm. um, under the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Alliance there are about 20 something political parties mm -hmm. under that political outfit mm -hmm. under the Kenya Kwanza, we have um, the a likes of ANC, the Ford Kenya, the United Democratic Alliance, and other parties also that are working very closely under the Kenya Kwanza uh, Alliance. I mean, what is first of all your take on um, this strategy of zoning? <laughs> zoning is a threat to uh -huh. democracy. Uh -huh. It is a threat, and uh, I think you know um, that um, the, the, the Azimio political party formation wasn't really thought through. I think there was a hurry to make sure that they have more political parties on board so that they can have more numbers. You know, it was a numbers thing, but they never really thought through, okay, how are we going to fill candidates? How are we going to... Because, you know, uh, I understand, and I'm not quite sure, that when uh, political parties were trying to join, they would come and say, for us, we want to join, but these are our demands. And... Um, we have a candidate for this co uh, county, we have a candidate for that, for that, and these ones you should not field. And you know now what ultimately did, it, um, you, you know, you get, you get numbers through the candidates that you're fronting. And if the candidates that you're fronting feel that they are not being accommodated, you know, they are not going to campaign for you mm -hmm. as, as, as a formation. And that whole thing for zoning, you saw how it created such a, a big issue in Nairobi. We had uh, candidates holding press conferences, uh, talking about, you know, for them, they have been in Jubilee and I, they don't understand why they are being told now that they can't, you know, participate and, you know, they can't have primaries, you know, basically talk kwa sababu yo tumesha negotiate with given someone else. So I think it's a threat to democracy. Um, for us in um, Kenya Kwanza, um, there was an intentional approach on to make sure that every candidate that is actually campaigning for, um, you know, the Hasla Nation for our presidential candidate, William Ruto, will be allowed. So what we did, it was, if you are under UDA, 
you go for your primaries under UDA, whoever wins under UDA mm. gets the ticket. If you are under ANC, the same. If you are under Ford Kenya, the same. We have PA, we have Chama, Chama we have all those political parties. And the, the understanding was that may the best candidate win. Mm. And yes, at one point, uh, particularly now if you look at Kiambu, there is some level of friction because you end up having like three or four candidates within the same, the same umbrella. Point, yeah. um, but I think, you know, that's democracy. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, um, these three or four candidates, also if you look at it from now, a uh, presidential candidate debate, they're still all campaigning for, for William Ruto. So um, it, it's, but, but it's the issue of you might divide, split the votes, and end up not clinching that gubernatorial seat. But the bigger picture is that you're actually all campaigning for William Ruto. All right, let yeah. me just cut you short then. Uh, you, know, um, you know, politics is about strategy. You have been on the campaign trail, you know how this goes. Yeah. And you know, what is it like going to be like? For example, if you have four, like the Kiambu case, you have four candidates who are uh, flying the ticket of different political parties under the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, mm -hmm. and you have um, one candidate that is being backed by about 20-something political parties under the Azimio La Moja One Kenya Alliance, courtesy of what they call the zoning strategy to win numbers. I mean, don't you think this is going to be I had not to crack for you Kenya see, first of all, this that direction. idea of having one candidate being backed by 20-something political parties is a fallacy. It's a fallacy because remember, there are candidates who have literally been told, you cannot buy, we have given this thing to this person. Mm -hmm. So you can be sure, backing is, it's, it's a semantic thing. It's like, yes, we, we have only as a Zimio fielded one candidate, but qua grassroots, all the other disgruntled candidates who were pushed out forcefully and nothing was, was offered to them or, you know, they feel they've been aggrieved. They are not campaigning for that candidate. Mm -hmm. So it appears, in essence, that Azimio has one candidate and so automatically all these other candidates, their votes should go to that guy. But that's not the case. The case is that you have one candidate because as a political party or, I mean, as a formation, you, as an alliance, you have decided to make sure that it's only one person. But qua grassroots, all the other people when you are Luambia, you can't buy. They have already taken, uh, <laughs> they are campaigning for whoever else. Mm. I'll give you an example that is very practical. In Nairobi, the moment um, Azimio had uh, two women candidates for the women rep who are from Kisi County. Actually, they are both called Kwamboka. And then they had Pasaris. And then they had, I think, two others. There was, uh, there was one from Luonyanza, and I can't remember the other one. And the ticket was given to Pasaris. And automatically on the next day, so you see, uh, the, the optics is that uh, Pasaris is being backed by 20 political parties. But the real thing is that the two Kuambokas who had denied the ticket decided to tell the electorate and all their followers, Sasa kama hata azimio yezi angalia wa kisi, iyo kurayoshe tutapelekea milicent omanga. So in just one day, milicent omanga gained you know, a lot more from the Azimio side. So in terms of qua ground, kabisa qua ground, that is not the reality that that, that, that one candidate is backed by the, all the political mm -hmm. parties. The reality is there are people who feel disgruntled, candidates who should have been left to, to vie or participate in primaries and actually, you know, either fail or get the ticket. And they are now silently but very actively campaigning mm -hmm. for their, their opponents. But, but don't you think that having that sit down to discuss and have sort of a gentleman's and when i say gentleman's i also apply to the other side as the well. negotiated yes. democracy yes. yes agree that this is the candidate we are going to field as a political outfit as a coalition as an alliance i mean doesn't it increase the chances of you securing it does win? if you bring all mm -hmm. the stakeholders to the table an example is how the kenya kwanza alliance formed the the nairobi team every single person that had declared that they are going to vie for senator of Nairobi or women rep or whatever, was brought to the table, every single person. And then they had a very extensive conversation where they looked at uh, the, 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 the formulas from a tribal perspective, from a background perspective, from the optics, whatever. And everyone on the table, every single, when I tell you every single person, I'm telling you, everyone who was vying under either ANC, Ford, Kenya, UDA or whatever in Nairobi, 
in any of those seats in Nairobi was at the table. By the time they concluded and they said, fine, our governor is Sakaja, our senator is uh, uh, Bishop Margaret, our women rep is uh, Millicent Tomanga, and then um, actually those were the county seats. So from there, you know, the other seats, they went for primaries and they actually competed. Mm -hmm. So I think then it beca then that's real negotiated democracy yeah. because then you feel you know Rafton for instance was in a race to ri he was running for senate he was in that conversation we had the likes of Karen Yamu they were in that conversation and and they all agreed they came out of there knowing we are supporting this lineup so it has to be a genuine it um, has to be genuine but like in Azimio you, you agree you don't see that your heart. yeah <laughs> that's why they had press conferences they had candidates yeah. coming out in press conferences saying they were not aware that zoning is happening and they were not aware that they are being taken out of the race so that was not negotiated democracy that's literally someone saying to me you know and and that's where the issue is because there was no genuine so, conversation so, so what's your counter strategy to ensure that not just the deputy president William Ruto wins um, mm. in August, but he has people to work with because you can't just say that um, or ground, you know, <laughs> it may go whichever direction. As long as uh, the DP wins, it's actually going to the overall goal of ensuring that no, Kenya we have wins. How do you ensure that even on the ground, Kenya Kwanza gets as many seats as possible so that deputy president William Ruto, in the event he wins in August, mm -hmm. has people to work with? So one thing I can, I can assure you is that we are going to have the majority in the Senate and we are going to have the majority in National Assembly. So how are you going to And we have that? a strategy. Yeah. And we have, we, we have, it's not just a strategy of waking up and saying to Eke Nani na Nani. It was even before the primaries, when we had started the negotiated democracy, we were looking at the strong candidates. We did real scientific polls, not these other ones just for swaying the masses. And, uh, and also there was a capacity that was, um, uh, that was offered to candidates to ensure that we are pushing them to have a win. So there's an intentional approach on making sure that we have majority in the Senate and majority in the National Assembly, and even that we are able to, to, to have majority of governors. So, and uh, of course I can't share the strategy because <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I mean, our uh, opponents, your be, opponents have already shared their strategy. No, they're so. taking notes. They, they don't have a strategy. They're just, it's an ad hoc <laughs> procedure. But I, I can tell you for a fact that... Sometimes um, they say when you don't share your strategy, there is no strategy. No, you see, even now in the, in the presidential campaign, we are throwing our efforts for the presidential candidate. But we are also, if you've seen with the women charter, we are also going down now to push for our women reps, to push for our women governors. There's, a, there's an intentional approach on how we are winning these seats because... At the end of the day, you can imagine when William Ruto is uh, the president and he has majority in, in the Senate, in the National Assembly, mm -hmm. and uh, in the Council of Governors, we control like, you know, at least 60% of the governors, then it will be easy for us to push our bottom-up right. economic approach. All right, yeah. so we'll talk more about uh, that, but I want us to, um, you know, bring on board uh, uh, Sefu Sani. She has joined us already. Thank you, Sefu, for creating time for us. Sefu is an MCA aspirant for Kenyatta Golf Course Award. Once again, Asante for creating time for us. Thank we are talking you. about the state of the race. I don't know what is the status of your race. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So just yeah. tell us a bit about, you know, how far you've gone, what's happening, mm -hmm. you know, what's, what's standing out for you. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to be on the show. And uh, it's been an interesting journey for me, being that I'm a first time aspirant. And I mean, there are many things that stand out for me. One, I think the reception of, on the ground has been great. Why? Because I think people want, uh, they want change and they want a transformative leadership. So that is what I've seen uh, as I've been traversing uh, my ward, which is a Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course Ward. So a lot of people want to know what is it that you can bring them that is different from what they've had over time. Because I think ever since our devolution came, we've had, um, we've had uh, three MCAs uh, in all three terms for them and when you look at Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course when you look at uh, the state of you know maybe the the minor roads which is the work of the MCA most of them are in very bad conditions so people are wondering really you know 
um, can we get leadership that is transformative for this area? So it's been, the reception has been very amazing and I thank the people for that. They want to hear what is it that you can give them, what can you do differently? Of course, there are a few challenges here and there uh, on the campaign trail. Um, once in a while, there are people who, you know, want to be given handouts because that is the situation that um, at the politics of the country has brought us into. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly and truly, I feel like this uh, election 2022 is going to be, there's going to be a big change uh, in the leaders that we have. And if the people are really keen, I really don't think uh, we're going to be having the six piece that most of the political parties are talking about. People are keen, especially on, uh, the people on the ground, on who their leaders are and who are the people who will give them transformative change. So they're not really, you know, Kenyans have grown and our democracy has really grown, whereby people are not really looking at, you know, um, there's this outfit of the party or, mm -hmm. you know, we belong to this or that outfit. No, but they're looking for people who can actually give them trans transformative change, who can be, you know, good leaders of the society, who have integrity and uh, people who can uphold uh, what they do and what All they right. say. All right. You're flying the Labour Party ticket? No, I'm flying the CPK Party, CPK which is party. Communist Party of Kenya. Congress Party of Kenya. Congress. Communist, Communist Party of Kenya. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I want us to talk about uh, something else that is also shaping this journey. You've talked about people not voting parties, but personalities, mm -hmm. individuals, yeah, yes. looking at the individual and what they stand mm -hmm. for. And let's talk about those people who are expected to be voting in August. A recent a final report by IEBC uh, showed that uh, 22,120,458 voters have been registered. And of course, it shows a slight increase from what we saw in 2017, where only 19.6 million people were registered as voters. I mean, are you optimistic? This is for both of you. Looking at that increase in the number of people who have registered as voters, is there a message that this is sending? Let me start with you, Gloria. Mm, I think, uh, first of all, on the issue of the new registered voters, um, we need to question if indeed those voters exist. Because in certain regions, we have seen that they have gone over a million new registered voters. And yet, when we had the registration drive, we were being told that, you know, it's not really hitting the targets that they had wanted to achieve. So, and then there's the issue of the, the register. Um, that they had wanted to just keep on digital until the um, until actually it was passed in court that they have to have an alternative register because before um, IBC was saying that they will only use the digital register which means they would not you know publish in every polling center the physical register of the the vote the, the, the registered voters of that polling center you know normally it's there like a day or two days before and then you can verify that in fact oh we are Likufa we are Siwahapa Ama these ones have been been imported or whatever so that was actually a scare because you know how else would you verify that indeed the 22 million as at, at the registered voters that we have now are actually legit so I would say um, definitely there has to be a growth in the registered voters because population is growing dynamics are changing electorate is actually being uh, they are more aware that they need to participate in this uh, electoral process but we also need to be careful so that we don't have ghost uh, registered voters who shall be used or potentially can be used to rig the election. All right. Yeah. I'm coming back to the manual uh, voter <laughs> register quagmire in just a bit. It has elicited a lot of uh, you know mixed reactions in the country, but also just to get your sentiments on the same, that, that slight increase in the number of people who have registered as voters. As somebody who is vying, you know, how do you interpret this? What does it tell you? Uh, I think it's actually a positive thing mm -hmm. um, if we have an increase in the number of voters uh, from 19 million in 2017 to 22 million right now. I think that's something uh, positive to look at and it means that now people are becoming more aware of, of their rights and of, you know, uh, of the voice that they have uh, through voting and through choosing their leaders. 
But um, one thing that also I'd like to point out is issues, anomalies that are coming out, you know, from the uh, from the voters list. One being a lot of people who've been transferred from the areas where they are voting into into other places, and they're about you know 200 200,000 mm -hmm. from the statistics that are given, and we don't know whether whether they will rise. So there are there are a few anomalies that have come out mm -hmm. that have come up, and we hope that um, by the time we are having the election on the 9th of August, uh, these anomalies will be rectified, and they won't be a big issue. And of course, as uh, Gloria has also mentioned, uh, the issue that we have of um, of um, the manual register vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, this other one that is digital. And I remember in one of the primaries, there was an issue of a password, you know, which uh, became uh, very trendy and which was coming from, you know, uh, <laughs> a, a, a very... Uh, the from, ODM yeah, primary. Yes, yes, there was an issue and, you know, it was a big deal and people were wondering, okay, now everything you is ready. You had to take us back there. <laughs> yes, but the password so... Moment. The password yeah, the only thing is, Nagari. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only thing is now, of course, um, when now we speak about our digital vis-a-vis uh, -vis the manual, I think there would be, it would be prudent for us to have the digital and the manual at, at the polling station. Mm -hmm. That is what I'd say. But, but also another thing uh, in, the, in, the, in the voters is the issue of the youth uh, who are the majority in Kenya. And there's a bit of apathy coming from there because a majority of the youth, uh, a majority of the population, I think 35% of the country is young people. But when you look at the uh, the voter list, the youth are not really represented. So there's a bit of apathy yeah, there, yeah. which is something we need to look I, at. I was actually going there before right. we get to the manual uh, voter register. Um, the youth factor in this whole uh, registration process. Mm -hmm. And of course, according to the IEBC, although we may have had an increase in the number of people who have registered as voters, uh, only 39.84% of the 22.1% one million voters um, a vote are young people and this means that the number of Kenyan voters who are aged between 18 to 35 years who have registered to vote in August dropped by 5.27 percent this is in comparison to the numbers we received in 2017 so, I mean, uh, you are concerned about that. Yes. I want to know why, uh, you know, leaving out a big chunk of the youth who are, um, you know, v qualified to mm. register as voters between 18 to 35. Mm. I believe somebody is qualified to register, but they didn't register. Mm -hmm. How does this, uh, what, what, how does it concern you? What is it that, that, that you feel, what impact is this going to have? Of course, the first thing that concerns me is that I'm in that demographic, you know, and I'm vying for a political seat. So, and even when you look at Kenya, for example, if you look at, um, if you look at parliament, um, the representation of parliament, the average age is 54 years old. But when you look at our country, Kenya, what is the average age? It's, you know, 18 to 35, meaning what? We need to have more young people to be able to represent, you know, the issues that are coming out. For example, the issue of youth unemployment is a very big issue you know in the country with uh, which is rising at about 40 percent you know as we speak so of course there's a lot of apathy because if we have a government that cannot provide uh, employment for its young people then you know what is happening to these young people they don't have faith in the leadership and of course now this goes back to the socio-economic rights which are embedded in our constitution in article 43 and employment is one of these socio-economic rights with other you know rights coming up um, the right to decent housing you know water and sanitation mm -hmm. uh, nutrition which is also uh, coming out very uh, very much with the COVID-19 pandemic that we have right now for example a lot of a lot of young people you know water and sanitation is very important for this pandemic you know having a decent shelter nutrition and a lot of these young people are unable you know to even face um, what is happening in their world which is the pandemic because now they have to worry about you know how will they survive from mm -hmm. day to day so of course okay. this brings about a lot of but apathy what very fundamental issues you're raising they're affecting and touching the youth and it's good that it's coming from a young person a young person <coughs> who is vying to be yes. a leader Leader. But Gloria, you're a youth policy analyst. And uh, I mean, these are issues that, that, that we all relate with living in this particular country. But the youth had a chance to change the narrative by registering as voters. Then they can be able to elect, <laughs> you know, the leaders that can be able to solve some uh, of these issues. So by the way, why, what is holding uh, the That's a narrative, by the way. Yeah. There's no voter apathy coming from the youth. Mm. There isn't. That is a narrative that is being created so that we can start accepting it, so that when it comes uh, a point where we have intention 
conventions to rig elections. It will legitimize the rigging of elections. Do you have different numbers? <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. You need Do to you have more, different numbers? You need to interrogate even the percentages and things that we are being given by IEBC. You need to interrogate it. And I'm not a statistician, but I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you need to sit down with those numbers, look at what they are trying to push and say that five percent that we have a decline of five percent on registered youth. Look at the numbers that they are giving and the numbers that we had before, and then go and look at the census that we just carried out. And you will see that there's a problem. So there's a narrative that is being pushed that there is voter apathy from the youth. Yet we have nothing to show for it, you know. When you're talking about, uh, for instance, the political parties that carried out uh, party primaries, the youth went out and voted. I mean, I got 5,587 votes in Kisi County as a woman. I can tell you there were women and youth who came out and voted for me. So there's no voter apathy. In fact, what is happening is that there's, there's, there's a very, let me say, evil spirit trying to confuse the youth <laughs> so that they don't go out. <laughs> And, 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 and no, participate yeah. in this election All process. Right. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, and think, I think Gloria is in denial. denial. Allow me to do I'm something. I'm not in denial. Allow me to do something about what is yeah. happening Allow in the country. Allow me to do something very quickly. We are coming back to pick up on this. Gloria seems to be feeling like this is not real. She's in denial. denial. No, we are coming back to pick up from there. <laughs> but I just want us to quickly also follow up on something uh, this morning. All right, all right. Um, I'm told we can put that on hold a little bit just to continue. So listen, with this. Uh, <laughs> now uh, about the youth and this apathy that they are claiming. In, in party primaries, they participated, they are actively in the rallies, they are engaging in the election process. And uh, so interrogate those numbers. Um, yesterday we had a, a launch for our Kenya Kwanza Youth Charter. And we had youth there, so many youth, and they were, they, they were not being incentivized to it's, come. I thought you had the so, one thing to be there and be physically there, but it's no, another no, no. to have a voter's card. Do you remember, card. do you remember? It's there's another a, to have a voter's card. Safin, there's a time that, that on the election day and these vote. people are registered. Mm -hmm. There's a time that I sat here and someone said that uh, uh, the youth, you cannot rely on the youth for their votes. You know, the youth, they are not necessarily interested in, in elections and whatever. And I stopped them and I told them, can you show me any data? that showed you in this election and that election, the youth never participated, the youth never voted. There's no data out there. There's actually no data, Safin, that will show you in 20, uh, 2007, this is how people voted and the youth didn't vote. In 2013, the youth didn't. There's nothing, there's no data. <laughs> I think so. But, but I I'm think coming back to you still but, to tell me but, 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 you but, have... And the more we perpetrate the narrative, I will tell you, what is happening is that we are selling fear and, 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 right. and hopelessness to the youth. No, no, so, let, me, let me hold it a little bit yeah. and do this very quickly. So just uh, you know, a quick comment from my guests before we take a very short break and come back on what we were discussing. Um, there was that piece caravan that was launched last week and uh, there is this campaign that the country is currently running uh, the campaign Bilanoma I mean it's, 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 it's something that we should do in, and, and move on with our lives <coughs> maybe just your message and you, how, how, you, how you see this whole uh, initiative of uh, preaching peace and instilling that message at this particular time what is it that, that, that you tell the country in this season, Gloria? Mm, I think it's a good initiative actually and uh, I, I i don't think they should only do it during uh, elections we should start we should start normalizing the sensitization of the electorate as an ongoing process um i love the idea of a peace caravan going around and preaching peace and 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 trying to because it, it will not only push the peace message but it will get those youth who you are thinking are not coming to vote to get them on board as well and I think it will also create some level of, you know, we must participate in this process as a Kenyan. So I love the idea. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a really good initiative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah um, same thing. It's a, it's a great initiative to have where we push for peace. And of course, in the same manner in which our politicians are campaigning, going around the country, then it's a good idea to also have a caravan going around the country to sensitize people and to remind them, you know, of who we are as a country and that we are one no matter the electoral process or who we are electing uh, into the leadership. But I would also like to add that apart from the caravan, I think there are many other activities that can be done in the community and in the, in the society uh, to push for peace even during this time. Like, for example, the way we have the the Nyumbakumis around the way we have something in the community just something that brings the community together where they can do something and, re and remember that they are one as a community and they'll continue to be one and they've been one you know before and after this electoral process and I think it's a good initiative to even happen right now during the elections uh, because this is the time that you know people um, 
let me say stop thinking for a while or maybe become <laughs> polarized or you know we are, yes, we are always like, okay we are always okay and, and then you need this time so i think it's a good thing to yeah, have it yeah now. sure but it should be sustained like gloria says i yeah. mean it should not just be concentrated around the election but, but i think for this time that, it yeah, has yeah. from previously I, I think a year about even yeah. two years there has been conversations about about peace there have been artists there have been so many things happening so i think this time there has been a, a real change from the way things have been happening all right previously. what i always say don't don't raise your hand against your neighbor because elections come and go but it is that jirani that you will go to when mm. you're in trouble it is that person and, next to you, you know what has also that changed. you will go to to help you after elections yeah and so i, think, I think also if, this election is different because it's not only just about political rallies if you look at what we've done, we've changed. When I say we, it's like uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. We are, the, the, the town halls, no, the the town halls that we are holding, you know, the, the mode of campaign had always been uh, rallies. You know, getting on top of cars and shouting at people mm -hmm. and hoping that the people shout back at you. Mm -hmm. And the moment we moved from tribal politics into issue-based politics, you actually realize you can't start shouting the agenda from the top of a roof, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, of the, of the car. Right. So we switched it to town halls and the idea of having town halls and talking to people calmly and making them understand your manifesto your agenda has also brought down the temperatures of, of, right. of campaign right. yeah thank but you I so think, much i mean also canvassing other things it doesn't have to be just uh town halls all right well, let, let's yes. take a very short break right now we are coming back remember there's that um hot issue about whether the youth registered as voters in this upcoming election or not. We are still not in agreement on that. So we'll be picking up on that particular subject when we come back. This is News Check. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. In case you're just joining us, we are talking about the state of the race this morning. But remember, a little bit later on, we'll also be looking at a very major stakeholder in this whole process, that is the media. We'll be looking at the role of the media in Kenya. I'll be having a sit down with Polycap. Omolo Ochilo is a former lecturer at the School of Journalism at the University of Nairobi. But in Studio 4, the better part of the first hour, we have been talking about the state of the race and I've been engaging a panel of two ladies, Sefu Sani, an MCA aspirant for Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course Award right here in Nairobi, and Gloria Oruoba. She is a youth policy analyst. Thank you, ladies, for creating time for us once again. We were talking about the youth factor in this election, and it begins by them registering as voters. And IEBC just recently gave us, um, you know, the final report on the voter register for 2022 general election. And looking at the numbers and how the youth participated in this, <coughs> like I told you earlier, 39.84% of the 22.1 million voters are young people. And this is a drop from what was witnessed in 2017 by up to 5.27%. This is IEBC giving us these numbers, but Gloria says, <laughs> No, this is not it. So <laughs> I'd like to give you a chance, Gloria, to just... I think uh, here's my point. According to the census that we just carried out, you have 30% uh, of the population of this country forming uh, the ages of 18 to 34. 35. So 18 to 34-year-olds, that is, they form 30% of the, pop the general population. And IEBC has told us that... That 18 to 34 actually are now forming 39.8% of the registered voters. So do you think there's apathy? If there's 30% of the whole total population forming the ages of 18 to 35, which is the youth, that's 30% mm -hmm. there. And then IBC is telling us from now the registered voters, that is between 18 and, you know, I don't know how many, which age, yeah? 39.8% of that actually form the registered voters. Where is the apathy? 
first of all, I just want to say. <laughs> That's um, a good question. I mean, really, like, like, like there? Yes, yes, we yes, form more than forty percent. I'm getting there, Gloria. I think you're in denial, and I've told you this before, and um, I'll explain it. Surfing has just told us that according to the IEBC statistics, there's a five point seven percent drop seven, which is yeah. yes 5.27 which is witnessed uh, from 2017 to now so even that 39 is telling you that there was a drop from 2017 so for you to say that you know there is no voter apathy i think that is being in denial because it is already telling you that remember they were targeting it is already telling million. you no, you had your chance you, you had your chance you had your chance okay. okay yes so the fact that the youth in 2017 between the ages of 18 to 34 were more uh, registered more as voters as compared to now in 2022 it's telling you something another thing that i want to mention it's actually it should be 35 percent of the population that is youth that is 18 to 18 to 34 but there's 70 percent of the population which is youth if you're talking about youth from the age of zero now to 35 and even when you're speaking about youth, then that age is also represented in policy. When you're talking about the CBC they curriculum, don't vote. Like, yes, they, they don't, don't vote. vote. Yes, they don't <laughs> we're vote. About registered yes, voters. we're talking about Guys. registered <laughs> voters, but we're also talking about people who have stake, and that is something that you're not. So can, wait, can, can, I, can, I, can yes. I? Can I? Can I? just say something? The question is simple. Even as you say, there that, is there is apathy, do, do, and let me yeah. let me mention yeah. why there is apathy. Yes, yes, first that of was all, the question. Yeah. First of all, look at the the issue of unemployment of young people. It is over 40 percent why is that happening in such a government that means that the government has failed its young people that is another one issue if you look at the rising cost of living look at you know the cost of commodities today unga is going at 220 kenya shillings and there's someone who does not have employment so what is this that motivates them to come and vote if they do not have employment so yes there is voter apathy from the young people but we are not we are saying that yes the young people who have come out to register as voters we are not uh, denying that fact but we are also saying we could have had more young people so what is the issue here when you're talking about voter apathy we are, it's not a, a fear narrative we are giving it sensitization that we now want these young people to come out we are letting them know that they are the majority we are letting them know that they have a voice we are letting them know that they don't have to die in you know hopelessness that this is a voice for them so if this is an issue that is there let us raise it up instead of burying our heads in the sun so think, because, we we trying, the right. because we are trying to no, push I, an agenda. I, let us talk, I, 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 let I, I, us talk I, I, about the reality the but allow and me tell to the say, young people allow me now to, say, to no, come out. Allow me to say this. this. Uh -huh. Allow no, me to yeah. say this. Mm -hmm. You see, IBC was targeting 6 million new Voters, registered yeah. voters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of course, those were virgin voters, people who probably for whatever reason have never gone to vote. And they ended up with 2 million. From that 2 million, can they give us the demographics of who they were expecting, other than the youth, to go and register? You understand? Mm -hmm. So they when have. I tell you, they when have. I tell you, there is no apathy. I've already explained to you. If our total population is thirty of, of eighteen to thirty-four, is thirty percent. You know, you can't talk about the youth who are uh, five years old. They are not. They are, they are not. <laughs> they cannot vote, and they were never going to go to IEBC during the drive to register to vote. So let us just be realistic on the numbers. So if we are saying that now IEBC is saying there's a decline from last time, there is a general decline. They were targeting six million new registered voters because of their poor sensitization and their absolutely horrible drive. They only from six million managed to register two million. So, of course, if you're going to use that as your benchmark of saying, now let us compare these 6 million who we should have registered with the past registered voters, according to you and, and, and your numbers, you will say there is apathy. Now, why I'm saying this is a fear narrative is, if you have 39.8% of youth, 18 to 35, registered to vote, and yet the total population, we have 30% of youth according to the census. Mm -hmm. I keep asking, and I, that's why I'm saying interrogate, where is the apathy? As a matter of fact, you have, that is about 40% of registered voters being the youth. 
in a, in a drive and sensitization where IEBC failed to even reach the halfway mark of their 6 million. But they still so managed to so get an... Yeah, the, the 40% of the youth I, I could be 60%. Right, so let me do this. I need this. you to understand. No, 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 so let, let me do this. Let me do this. Ladies, 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 ladies. My message, let me do my this. message is, yeah. you know, if you keep saying, and I've uh, as a youth policy analyst, and I'll say this, if you keep beating down the youth, what you are psychologically doing is you're already telling them, by the way, you guys don't even participate in these things. So let's move on. Let's move on from the numbers. We are not saying that youth are not voters. I'll give you a chance. Now you are give you a chance. This is it. So the narrative. if you had other numbers that we could compare with what IBC gave us, then we would stick and discuss the numbers. But we do not have. We've used the census. <laughs> we do not have. So let's look, look at the issues here. Yeah. Why is it important for the youth vote to be part and parcel? Why, why is the youth issue such a hot button? Even this morning, you can see it clearly. Why should the young person who is watching this program this particular morning have that change of mindset going forward? We agree that there are issues that they're going through. They've been failed by previous um, regimes. Maybe the, the, the leaders they voted in and they never you know, fulfilled their obligation to them. But then why should they have a change of heart safely? Because the youth are the workforce of this country, they are the people who who should have the means of production. They are the people who, if they work in this country, our GDP will go from from where we are and will skyrocket. So the youth are the hope of this nation. The youth are the leaders of this nation. The youth are the energy of this nation. The youth are the hope of this nation, and that is why. And the youth are the voice of this nation. And it's not that. They don't have a voice now. They still have a voice now, which is what I'm trying to say. And they can still come out, you know, and exercise that so that they can be able to be represented, so that their issues can be able to be looked at, so that the issue of unemployment, especially for young people in Kenya, will not be an issue anymore, so that we will have industries in this country. For example, uh, Safin, uh, I don't know if you're aware that most most of the toothpicks we have in this country come from China. Why should we have toothpicks in this country coming from China when we can have an industry in this country where young people can be employed to do that? So this is the reason why the youth should come out. And if there's an issue, we look at the issue and we settle it. We don't go around it. We don't distort information. <laughs> right. We don't stay in denial that this is a problem. We face the problem and then we look for solutions. I'll come back to you to tell me what you have in your basket of goodies for yeah the youth mm -hmm. now that you know where the problem is um gloria you've been part of the back room also uh, mm -hmm. crafting uh, something that uh, you know is sort of looked at as, as a dose to what is ailing the young people in this country um talk to us a bit about uh, that the youth charter that you said you signed was it yesterday yesterday yes yeah what is it that is it seeks to change what is it that what 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 breath of fresh air should the young person of Kenya <laughs> expect First that of all, they've you not know, experienced uh, before? With youth issues, you can't reinvent the wheel, you know. Mm -hmm. The issue with unemployment, you have to solve it by creating jobs. So you can, you can come up with all sorts of fancy schemes and fancy things, but uh, really, it is, it, we, the problems are the same, they have been the same. Um, but I think what I will say is special about the youth, the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance Youth Charter that we signed, uh, that our uh, presidential candidate William Ruto signed yesterday, is that it's an intentional approach, number one. By that I mean um, we need to stop dealing with the youth agenda as a by the way. You know, it's like when we had BBI, we talk about all these things and, and then, oh, the youth. Then you throw in two sentences or three sentences. So the first thing that I would say is special is that it's an intentional approach that we actually had our principal sit down and we said, you know what, we are about to launch the manifesto, but we are not quite sure that uh, we will fit into that, you know, big agenda that you have to, for the country. So we would like for you to pay special attention to the things that we have here. And that was the first thing. The second thing I'll tell you is that... Um, we are looking at the same issues that have been there. If it's about um, the youth being unemployed, how do you go about it? How do you create an environment which we are talking about issues of, 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 that relate to already legislature that we have? For instance, AGPO, the access to government procurement opportunities for the youth, people with disability and women. Why is it not working? How come the youth are not feeling that actually there is an initiative here that is an affirmative initiative for you, but they are not feeling it? So we went down to the detail of why it's not working and proposed certain, um, let me say, administrative things 
that needs the goodwill of, of, of the president for you to be able to push that agenda. So you look at um, issues such as representation, for instance, um, and I'm glad that she's here and she's um, vying and within the youth category because what has been happening is that um, due to certain challenges, financial challenges, uh, the issue of, of youth not being taken seriously, you have time, mm -hmm. things like that. If you go through the charter, we are actually intentionally trying to change that and saying, as the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance government, we need for us to have representation on appointive seats and on elective seats of 30%. On electives, uh, on appointive seats, we are talking about boards, we are talking about parastatals, we are talking about the youth ministry actually having a youth outfit of people who relate to the issues. So we were, it was actually a very cozy conversation with the, 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 His Excellency, the Deputy President, basically telling him, the youth don't need much. You already have, people have sat down and drafted papers, you know, who are we to reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. What we need is the goodwill from you to actually ensure that these things are working for us. Oh. In terms of things like access to capital, which have been targeted to the youth, look at the outfits that we have, Youth Fund, Weso Fund. You need, they have a lot of bureaucracy, you know? You need the security to access the, 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 the capital. You need, I don't know how many signatures you need. You know, it's, there's a lot of things that actually, it's a youth fund, but it is not addressing the issues of the youth and how they can easily access that. So, um, and we were talking to him about like the Hustler Fund that is proposing, the 50 billion Hustler Fund. We already know 50% of it is going to the women because I was in the women charter and we <laughs> pushed for that. So when we sat with the youth, we were like, yeah, 30% of the remaining should also go to the youth mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, if we're going to have 50 billion going towards capital, we also want the youth businesses to be able to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what... Uh, um, the, the, the presidential candidates, including Wajakoya, should actually, uh, let me say, emulate and say, have an intentional approach. Sit down with the actual youth, you know. Don't be in a boardroom, three or four people, and then come out and then give Alex Marete, go and read this speech. No, sit down with the youth and tell them that All they right. have to <laughs> let's talk about this and, and, and i appreciate that and let me tell you it was a wonderful event yesterday those who didn't um, catch it live they can go on our social media pages mm -hmm. the united democratic alliance page was all aired there. Sefu, you're vying for the Woodley um, Kenyatta Golf Course Award in Nairobi. On a CPK ticket. Uh, on a Communist uh, Party of Kenya ticket. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about how you seek to address the youth agenda. Very briefly, because you're running out of time. All right, and I uh, thank you very much. I have a six-point uh, six manifesto for the people of Woodley, and I'll just say it, uh, I'll just mention it, and then I'll come back to the first agenda. My first agenda, uh, on my manifesto is actually tackling youth unemployment and empowering the youth and it is through three ways three ways through arts through sports through entertainment and also our formal employment and my second issue is on gender equality and gender-based violence my third is on social justice my fourth is on Pesa Mashinani or economic empowerment. Uh, my fifth is on Kuinua Biashara na Wana Biashara Wadogo Wadogo. And my sixth one, of course, is legislation or Serampia. So now, when we go back to the first issue on my manifesto, which is tackling uh, youth, uh, youth unemployment and uh, and youth empowerment and first of all I've, I've started an initiative with my team which I, I thank them very much for the work that they're doing and for the voluntary process in which um, you know we we don't just promise the young people that we're gonna do something for them we start with with uh, tangible plans how do we do this as she's saying you don't go to a boardroom and I'm, I'm just she's saying we don't go to a boardroom and they went to a boardroom no 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 we had an economic for but, no no no, um, no, no really. let me just we yeah, had yeah. no 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 so I will not allow that we, we, we were not in a boardroom, we had an economic forum with okay, the youth. Okay, okay, please. Yeah. All right. No, we'll so, um, yeah. we, uh, we go to the young people from the different areas that we have in Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course. For example, in Upper Hill, in Kenyatta Estate, in NCC, in Lainisaba, uh, in Odaya. So uh, the first thing we're doing is that we are forming uh, groups for these people. So for example, um, we have, uh, for example, the KNH Loyalty Group, we have the Upper Hill Youth Group, we have the NCC Youth Group. And and from these youth groups, because they are organized, then we are able to get you know people from there when we have different opportunities. So my plan uh, for the people for the people of Woodley Kenyatta Golf Course mm. is 
first of all, for them to be organized, because it can't be random. You're saying you're going to give employment, then, you know, it will be, am, am I going to pick my friend, my neighbor, my who? Mm -hmm. So if they're organized and they're in groups, then, you know, that is uh, the first thing. We have leadership in those groups and we give them the money to register Thank the you. groups. Thank so you. that is now my initiative, what I'm doing. I won't go and give the youth money, but I'll say, okay, this is the money I'll give you to register this group. And from this group, this is what we are going to do. Thank you. So for example, we are going to have art and entertainment. We have uh, a tournament coming up for the uh, for the football teams in the area where we'll re uh, we'll register we'll register for the football teams and they'll be able to come from the different areas you know uh, in the ward right. and right. um, thank you so much thank you so much I want to give you ladies a chance to give me your final <laughs> words uh, Gloria is it all right <laughs> Gloria gets the chance Gloria okay. your final thoughts um, I'll, by the way that's a very good manifesto yeah. and I was just thinking about it when she was talking and I was like these groups that you register we will prioritize them with when we are dealing with the Fifty billion hustler fans. <laughs> <laughs> we'll prioritize those groups. But uh, my, final, my final word would be <laughs> the youth, the youth, um, um, the youth of Kenya. I don't think they should. They don't buy into this narrative. There is no apathy. You people are doing a good job. Just keep coming out in numbers. This whole idea of people telling you, oh, the youth, I'm Jakuja register. I, I don't believe in that. I think it's a fear narrative, and I want to actually mm. tell them not to feel hopeless and just to keep doing what they're doing and uh, yes there's a government coming in the kenya kwanza alliance government and we have the youth at heart i'm telling you Thank the 50 you. billion hustler fund the we have a lot of plans we trust you me we are going to we we'll even share our charter that that was signed that it was it's a commitment a promise to the youth of kenya by william ruto and i want you to just you know interrogate it and then and, and come ask us questions thank even you online. so much yeah. yeah gloria oroba there youth policy analyst i was also having a sit down with the safe for sunny she is an mca aspirant udle kenyatta golf course word thank you ladies for creating time for us this morning thank you. and uh, that is all the time we had for this conversation